And I want to go back to this experience of being the only woman in the room because recently we've seen that when men are in positions of power and women are not, the environment can not only be unpleasant and unfair, but also unsafe. And because of the recent news, we felt like we needed to address this issue so the kids um, are aware of kind of the issues around this. So I wanted to ask you all, well, I wanted to ask you how you talk to your children about these issues, but first of all, I wanted to ask you for the mothers, how many of you have experienced sexual harassment in the advertising industry? And uh, can I just get a, a show of hands from the audience? How many of you have experience? Wow. And if you can just leave your hands up for a second, how many of you have a friend who has experienced? Thank you. So, um, Kristen, since you've been open about declaring Me Too, um, can you tell me a little bit about how you've seen it in the advertising industry? I mean, my declaring Me Too was about being assaulted in college, not about sexual harassment in advertising, but um, I never felt like the only girl in the room. I always just felt like me, and it, that was it. And there was one time, or the first time, that I really felt demeaned because I was a woman. I was hosting a cocktail party, and it was a black tie award show, and I was doing the pre-party, and I was really excited because I was meeting all these you know, huge people in advertising, and there was a man that I was meeting who we were bidding a job with, and I had never met him before, and, and I was just, you know, thought, FaceTime, it's gonna put in a good word for my director and us, and I went to introduce myself, and there was, I was surrounded by other men, and I said, I'm Kirsten Emhoff, I'm so excited to meet you, and he looked at me, girls' earmuffs, and he said, wow, I thought the first time I'd met you, your legs would be behind your head. And, and he was, you know, kind of joking, but whatever, and all the guys laughed uncomfortably. And first of all, it took me a minute to figure out what he, was say what he had said, because I couldn't get the logistics of it right away. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then, when I realized, I just felt like an idiot. And he leaned over and like, tried to French kiss me at the, after that. And I pulled away and I literally felt like he had cut me off at the knees. Because all of a sudden, I looked like the biggest idiot in the room of all these important people. And I was so like, just, you know, stunned by it, but, but not angry. I really just felt like I was, you know, the smallest person at that point, which sucked. And um, Judy, uh, tell, tell us about your experience going to Cannes as a young woman in advertising. Yeah, so I was invited to Cannes and, um, you know, I was young. It was, you know, I, I hadn't even traveled anywhere before. And um, the creative director came up to me and he said, you know, we're inviting you to Cannes this year. And I th said, that's amazing. And he said, yeah, you know, it's really expensive, so you're going to have to share a room. And I was like, no problem. Yeah, it's going to be with a, a guy um, from the other office. Oh my gosh. And I thought, okay. Um, and you know, at that moment, you think, one, you know, I, 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 you know, to Chloe's point, you don't want to say no because you don't know if you're going to get invited again. And then it makes you question: Am I just being really uptight about this because the guy probably seems okay about it, and maybe I'm not, you know, being mature about this? And I was like, okay, so you know, I talk myself through it. We show up at Cannes and we get into the shitty hotel that we're in. And we open the door, and there's one bed. And like, just all the things that went through my head of like, okay, I'm going to take that roll pillow, and it's going to create the separation. And you know, and I was just being really logical about it. And he was all like, hey, whatever, it's going to be fine. And and then that night after, you know, you go out for drinks with a bunch of people, and he, you know, he gets drunk, and then he's like, he's hitting on me. And I just said, this isn't going to happen. And he said, you know, why are you being so uptight? And, and this went on for three days, like for three days. And you're young and you don't have any money and you're just like, what am I gonna do? And, you know, he would say things like, you know, what if I'm sleeping and my hand falls onto your breast? Like, you know, what are you gonna do? And I said, you're gonna wake up, you're gonna have no arms. Like, don't touch me. <laughs> um, 
And then, so three days later, I ran into the creative director and his wife, and uh, he's like, hey, how's it going? And I said, not good, like, it's not good. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna move out of that room, I don't know where I'm gonna stay, but I'm moving out of the room, and even if I have to pay for it myself, I'm out of there. And he just looked at me and he said, yeah, not working out, huh? And I just thought, wow, he, he was in on the whole thing, and his wife didn't say anything, and, um, you know, when the whole Me Too thing came out, I just thought, I, you know, it's, it's happened, and it's happened for a long time, and we just accept it as it's part of doing business, and, and you know, you don't let it destroy you, you just figure out how to keep going, and, and that's not right. And Margaret, what about you? Have you ever avoided people at work? I think like most people that I know probably have just, you kind of know who those people are and you navigate around them. Yeah. So career-wise, it's like really unfortunate because a lot of times the people with the most power, you know, have great assignments or things that you'd like to work on, but you know that person is kind of a sleaze, so you just, you know, work around it. I mean, that's been, I mean, in my experience, that's what I feel like most of us do. And Ella, how did you feel when your mom posted Me Too? Obviously, I was very proud because it's something that's really hard to talk about. And I think that just the whole campaign in general and having her be such an influential person in life and in advertisement and to me, I think that it really created a dialogue that is gonna hopefully try and end the stigma around sexual assault and harassment because I think one of the biggest kind of like killers with it is that there's such a stigma that it's not okay and that you should be shamed when really like you should allow it to be bad like it's a bad thing and I think that allowing it to be yeah it is bad <laughs> <laughs> allowing it to be bad and allowing you to know that like what happened to you is not okay will really start to create a powerful movement that will kind of like unite everyone and so for Ella and Kia do you think that this problem has lessened in your generation not even close I mean, with the whole culture around like high school partying and just kind of getting so drunk that you can't even think, you're, no matter what, like, we're not even safe in our own houses. Like, yeah. there's always situations about kids getting like groped or like un inappropriately touched at parties and like young as like 15, 16, like, yeah. no one's safe. And the excuse is that the guy is drunk, which is a horrible excuse, but that's what that's what goes on. Yeah, I was mortified, like, just talking to Kia about Me Too, and, you know, she's 16, and she said, yeah, you know, last year I was at this party, and this, this happened at the party, and, you know, some guy came up and tried to force himself on her, and, I, and you know, it just, it happened so early on. Yeah. And Viv, when your mom was telling you about what was going on in the news, what was your response? Um, I think, who would do that? And why would you do it? And so, um, <laughs> so for the moms, how do you teach your girls to avoid these experiences and not um, have to go through the same stuff that you went through? Well, Kia and I went to a self-defense course. I took her when she was like, 13 or 14. Really young. She was like, why are we doing this? And I said, because you have to learn how to defend yourself. And so I think one of the really powerful things about the Me Too movement is this idea of having a voice. And so for all of you, you have such a powerful voice in your work for the moms. And so I just wanted to share um, the spot that Kirsten and Margaret did together called Unacceptable Acceptance. Can we roll that? Okay. Ah! <laughs> Good news, I know it. First acceptance letter. Dear Miss Carthers, congratulations, you've been accepted to the class of 2021! Yes! 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 <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! So awesome! <laughs> this is so fantastic! Oh my god! Yes! So cool. What else is what you say? We are delighted that you have chosen us, but we won't choose to protect you from your rapist this coming fall. We'll only suspend him for a single day, then you're on your own. God. <laughs> I got it! So I got it. amazing. <laughs> oh 
the one you wanted? Yeah, it's oh. the one I wanted! It's so cool! And you're next! <laughs> Thank you. Um, that always makes me cry. Um, I wanted to also ask you, Kirsten, about what survival skills you developed um, to kind of manage, or to be successful, really, as a woman. Um, well, I really didn't develop any survival skills. I, I feel like I was assaulted in college and it took a long, I never ever dealt, dealt with it. And when I was producing a job in Europe, someone had tried to break into my hotel room and it, it set off a panic attack and I'd never had any anxiety before. And obviously because I didn't deal with it, I started getting panic and it took me 10 years of, of traveling and I always had to travel with other women and people had to stay in my room to just exist and be able to do my job. And I really think that my learning from that was to start talking about it. And when the filmmakers from The Hunting Ground approached me about doing a campaign for them, I knew I had to start talking about it. And I think that I don't have panic attacks anymore. I can sleep in a hotel room by myself now, which most of my friends are shocked by. And, um, um, you know, and I think that that's been the best thing, and that's the me too thing. It's like we all have to talk. 